Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another Speedcast session with Zoom CW, also known as Julio. Uh, thank you so much, you guys, for joining today. I truly appreciate your support. Today, we have a very special guest. You know him as Herb, and you also know him as the motion capture for Pogo. He is none other than than the super talented, multi-talented Mr. Ken Hall uh, from the Umbrella Academy. He is just such a funny actor, funny guy, improv master, and I'm very excited for him to join us today. So let's go ahead and get Ken on the live. Give me a moment here, guys. So we are having a little bit of a delay. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. Man. <laughs> How are I, you? I mean, actually... I'm good. I dropped my phone <laughs> as I was like, trying to connect here. And I'm like, hey, Leo. And then it went. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> hey, you know what? We are live. We are live. We are uh, live. This is happening. <laughs> you can me all right? Yeah, can I can hear see you. Okay? Yeah, I can see you, Ken. All right, great. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you so, so very much for making the time and being on my Speedcast interview sessions. Um, I truly appreciate it. How, how, how have you been? I've been pretty good, actually. Um, busy. Uh, uh, you know, it, we're in a weird time. You know, like, I, this is going to be such an interesting year to reflect back on. Uh, but generally, I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm healthy. Uh, I've, you know, I, I've been doing a lot of teaching online, which has been really nice. I've been doing a lot of career counseling, actually, which has been really nice as well. Before I, uh, before I actually got into doing acting on like a full time basis, I actually my my day job was career counseling, and uh, I worked in that field for about ten years. And at the start of June, I put out on my social media that uh, that I I knew people were hurting, and I knew that people uh, were feeling. A lot of anxiety and a lot of uncertainty in terms of, you know, where they where they were going to go. Uh, so I put it out there I was going to do uh, to offer free or donation only employment counseling. So that's really what I've been doing for the past couple, uh, two or three months or two three months now actually. Uh, so working with a whole bunch of people to try and and uh, help people get a sense of who they are and next steps and things like that. So. Uh, it's been busy in that sense, but I love helping people, and and that's been uh, if if I can't get on a stage, a physical stage in front of an actual audience, then uh, you know it's it's nice that I can like go back to a, another thing that I really enjoy, and that's again helping people. Uh, so that's what <laughs> that's what I've been up to. And you know, Ken, that's so awesome that you're doing that, man. You're such a an amazing person, by you know. By doing Thank that, you. especially, you know, like, like you said, people are struggling. Um, you know, you're, you're such a humanitarian man, and, and, and I applaud you for that, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Thank it. you so much for doing that. Um, you know, um, I got to also... Uh, thank you so much, and congratulations on your success on the Umbrella Academy season two. Of course, season one as well. Uh, you know, a lot of folks were were unaware that you did the uh, motion capture for Pogo in season one. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah, you would be able to tell that, right? Like, <laughs> you know, um, uh, I had some some fans, you know, um, they were kind of like trying to tell me, well, he was in Pogo. I go, yes, he was. He did the motion capture. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if you noticed, but on my second promo for you, I had to put that that picture of you with the motion <laughs> capture suit on. So people were you know, like, wait, wait a minute. 
<laughs> you know, um, I thought Gali, I thought Gali did that. Well, no, Gali did do the voice, but you did the action motion capture. Can you talk a little bit about that, Ken? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you're right. I mean, it's it's it's. Uh, it, I, I I am the body of Pogo, which is lovely, uh, and I get to share. So I'm kind of like the th three quarters down. So from the shoulders down, uh, that's my body, I guess, uh, and uh, layered on top of some really nice uh, uh, CGI stuff. And it, and it's Adam Godley. So the face and the voice of Pogo is Adam's, and uh, so I'm on set. And I'm in my, my gray mocap suit with my hat, my gloves, and with Pogo's cane. And, uh, and then we shoot all that stuff on set um, with the other actors and everything. And then from there, then, you know, then it, it goes off to, uh, I, I guess it goes off to the CGI people. For I'm not sure, like, at which point does it get into, like, Adam's hands, you know. Uh, but then Adam will, will do that work. He'll be in a studio. Uh, watching the playback and then just again adding his dialogue and the mannerisms, the facial expressions on top of that. And he's got his, the mocap stuff going on there. So it's, it's a cool team effort, you know, and I mean, the special effects speak for themselves. They're amazing. And, um, and playing Pogo was a, an awesome opportunity. Like I've never done motion capture stuff before. Uh, I've done a lot of prosthetics work in the past, but this was a real neat uh, first uh, and and to, it, it's Peter Jackson's people, Weta, that that do it, and, and Everett Burrell is just uh, Brad is just amazing. Like uh, oh, nice. like it's it's like the, some of the best of the best, I would say. You know, so uh, it's 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 that's what I say. It's also a team. It's very much uh, a, a team effort. You know, <laughs> that was you know you were so awesome in everything you. that you did in regards to Umbrella Academy. Um, can you talk about a little bit about that first? I, I thought I read something that on that Reginald Har Hargraves um, scene, that, that burial scene, I heard yeah. that you had a little bit of adversity that first day. Um, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, just a little bit of it. Just a little bit of uh, bronchitis. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it, it's so funny. Um, you, that was our first, that was my first day of being on set. The, the funeral, uh, that big funeral scene. And it looks amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was really sick going into it. And it's like, you never want to be sick on your first day at work. Uh, you're meeting everyone. And, like, there's, it's a lot of pressure, you know, and you want to show up and you want to do a good job. And so that first scene was so funny uh, because it was, an, it was an outdoor shoot. And we, we shoot a lot of Umbrella here in Toronto. And this is, we were shooting this uh, at the end of January. So if anyone's been to Toronto <laughs> in wintertime, it's not warm. It's a very, very cold place. And yet that day was so interesting because it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't warm enough for it to snow. It was just cold enough for it to rain. And uh, so I was in my mocap suit. And I was layered. I had like so many sweaters on underneath, and, and uh, uh, like the Michelin Man, the big tire guy. I was uh, <laughs> just, I was just so stacked with stuff, and uh, and I was freezing. And um, uh, you're out in the rain, so it was raining all day too. But what I love about this as well, because again, they want you know they're so specific. The technicalities of each shot, like it's beautiful and. Uh, and as as I said, like Everett Burrell, the, like the special effects guy, like it's so amazing um, what they do. So they added these these sprinklers on top of the natural rain because they wanted like beautiful <laughs> drops of water and stuff. So it, it was really raining, but it was also artificially raining with these sprinklers and. And uh, yeah, I, w I just had the worst case of bronchitis. I was on antibiotics and I just felt terrible, uh, but I did a good job and I survived it. And I went back the very next day to continue another part uh, from, from that scene. And, uh, but it's those kind of things that those challenges that you find on set it, near the end of that day, I was so cold that I could barely say my lines. So thankfully <laughs> Adam Godley is saying the words because my dialogue would have been all like, why it's chattering? What we're, we're getting something, you know, like we got to do it again. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, it was challenging, but I, I love those moments of, of, 
of something, okay, this is going to be hard, but you do it because you feel so fantastic afterwards. It's a huge accomplishment. And, and that was literally my first day on Umbrella Academy. So it was very, very, very memorable. Um, and Pogo is such a, it was such a, a lovely character to embody as well. I think, you know, I, uh, I, I I love the fact that he, you know, he, I think he's got a heart to him. I think he he tried to do well, <laughs> and uh, uh, it's it's complicated, you know, for sure it's complicated. But um, for me, it was like it, it, he is such a beautiful character. I think to play as well. So it, there's that joy within that too. You you are so awesome. You are a true legend. You know, doing going through that adversity and still killing that scene and and you know you're an, you're you're an, you're an actor's actor i mean you are you know the show must go on man you you are awesome yeah. uh and just an fyi aiden just gave you a thumbs up yeah. <laughs> hey aiden what's going on <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you for joining aiden thank you for joining um so you know <laughs> uh man let me let me just say for those of you that don't know um Adam Gali is uh, Mike TV's. Um, he plays Mike TV's dad in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So he he does the voice, um, and he he does an amazing voice. Uh, but let me ask you in regards to um, Herb, that yep. character, man, Herb is just his comedic timing is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, you're, 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 I mean, your timing is, I mean, the way that it was written, and, and I know you come from an improv background, you are an improv master. Um, you know, you're a teacher at Second City in Toronto, you're, you're alma mater, if I'm correct. Um, how did that improv background, um, you know, come, come to your advantage or disadvantage or how did that come into play in regards to when you were reading some of those scenes? Did you improvise any of that stuff? Um, oh yeah, there's, um, so th there's quite a lot <laughs> to that question. For me, improv is such a gigantic game changer. Um, I, 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 in terms of my acting, I started out just doing improv and I just did that for many years. And then after like 10 years, you're like, Oh wow, I've actually been studying comedy in that sense, you know, it's just the repetition and improv is so much fun. So I, I never went to like a, like a, a traditional theater school or acting school, but it was just getting those reps in on a stage. And so how that translates to doing like film and TV, you would just have an abundance of more options. And for me, it's always, it's always under this, uh, this, uh, uh, this term, an umbrella, uh, of, of play and fun. And, and I, my goal is like when I hit a stage here in Toronto, for example, I'm like, I want to make the audience laugh. I want to like tickle them. I want to find out like, what do you like? Do you like this? Do you like this? And a lot of my background too is an improv and clown as well. So I'm looking to play moments and I'm looking to find the comedy within that and just to maximize it. So uh, for me, it's all about showing up on set and playing. So everything that's written, I'm actually, it's so funny because like as an actor, they're like, here is your script. And I'm much more comfortable of like, I don't want a script. <laughs> like, let me, you know, I, and, and that's a rarity. I know a lot of actors get really freaked out when it's like, what do you mean? I got it like, oh no, like to, because it, it's uncharted territory. It's taking a risk and there's an uncertainty because you don't, you're literally making it up in the moment. Um, but for me, that's the thing that's the most fun and the most exhilarating is that it, there's just an abundance. It's kind of like going into the matrix <laughs> yeah. and you're just like, I need some offers. <laughs> like, like there's just an abundance of opportunities to play and, and Herb is written so well. And I think there's a lot of me in Herb uh, and, and like the dynamic, it was so great working with Kate who plays the handler because her character is so intimidating and scary and herb is afraid of her so it's like we get to play that wonderful cat and mouse like dynamic i, I like i'm afraid she's going to bite me or to hurt me or, or to kill me um <laughs> and uh, so the, it's written so well and then i just get to play on top of what's written too so there's a lot of fun things for example the physical comedy that herb does that's not written in the script that's a lot of my own choices uh for example that when i'm leading her in season two when i'm bringing her to her new desk in episode two and <laughs> and she you know she, she's like walking by me and it's such a narrow space and so i, I just kind of like <laughs> like i intentionally like bump my elbow into like the typewriter behind me and like you know just 
just being awkwardly nervous and uncomfortable. And so I just want to heighten that. I just want to um, heighten Herb's discomfort. And uh, and so he's a lovely character to play. And, and uh, I, I can really, feel like, I, I can really relate to a lot of Herb, you know, uh, sort of wants to do well, got a good heart. Um, and, <laughs> and he's, he's the underdog, like he gets, a lot, he gets roughed up <laughs> a lot, a lot of knives to the throats and, <laughs> and threats, but, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the comedy really, again, like that really just comes back to just the reps of doing a ton of improv. And, and again, yeah. like if people haven't tried improv, I really highly recommend it. It is like, it, I don't even mean it for like acting or something, but it will open up things about you as a person and this idea of like being comfortable with risks, with the uncertain and without trying to uh, make things happen in a particular way, it's more you're going into it kind of like the matrix in a sense where you're, it's, you're more searching for possibilities and collaboration rather than like, this is the only right choice to do. It's like, so mm -hmm. for me, it's free. It really is free and it's cathartic and it's cathartic play for adults is uh, a, a way that I look at it. So yeah, getting to embody her, <laughs> it's just great because I get to, oh man, I get to play. <laughs> you were so amazing in it, man. <laughs> Truly, bravo. Um, you know, we Thank talked you. about improv. Improv is, in my opinion, it's so difficult to do. You know, you're up there on stage, you're asking for ideas from the audience, and you got to go at a second's notice. That is hard, man. So, you know, I mean, kudos to you. Um, you know, and, and you're such a great actor and an amazing actor because, you know, yeah, you, you, you do those, you know, you, see, you, you have that look like you're scared of the handler of Kate. You know, you're scared of her, but yet... Um, and Aiden, I don't know if you're still in the in the in the uh, in the live, but when you know she's giving, she's praising Aiden's character number five, and 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 he sits down at his desk, and you give him that that glare, like you're just <laughs> mad dog, and I'm like, like he's the teacher's pet. Uh, that was such an amazing. Can you talk a little about about that scene? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well that's another again great thing is like it's not written in it's not written in the script that i you know <laughs> i give him that kind of reaction but it was like that's just another game it's so i look at like moments to play and that's such a fun moment of like this guy's like stealing my thunder you know, and, and her is like threatened by the new guy because he's never going to win in the eyes of the handler right uh like, he's always going to get dumped upon and, and again like that was such a fun dynamic to play with Kate, so yeah, it was super fun to play with Aiden in that sense because he's like the teacher's pet in the sense, right? Like he can never do anything wrong. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm struggling, you know, and everyone knows that I'm struggling. I'm trying to do my best, but <laughs> how's your how, how's your ear, by the way, Ken? Is it is your ear better? It's a bit better. <laughs> yeah, I put some ointment on it. Yeah, a little polysporin. <laughs> uh, what did you think? You. <laughs> what did you think about? Um, you know, season two's uh, Pogo, his his backstory. What did you think about that? Oh, man. <laughs> I got so moved by watching. I was like, <laughs> tears welling up. Oh, man, with the music on top. Like, that's one of the special things about Umbrella. Like, the, the music and everything. Like, the, oh, gosh, that just really got to me. Um, they're very touching. Very beautiful. I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> it was so good. And, uh the the person who plays uh baby pogo uh katrina she's really lovely we actually worked on a movie quite a few years ago called uh, a christmas horror story and i only found this out afterwards because we never met on set but it was just through instagram we we're like wait a minute oh my god you're the person who plays baby pogo so i thought it was a lovely i'm so glad that they show the origins of pogo um it makes me just feel that much more for him you know such an, an adorable uh, character and then again like where he comes from and I'm like wow he got to go to space that's cool <laughs> I, I totally think you should get I totally think Herb should get a backstory next season what, what do you think <laughs> oh my god that'd be so great yeah <laughs> I've been uh, doing a bunch of interviews and stuff and people are like what do you want to see and I'm like I don't want to see what what Herb what does Herb do when he's not at the commission you know, like at home, like watching TV or something, or like, uh, like yeah, I think he's got like a bowling, a bowling league or something. You 
are like volunteers at a at a food bank. I don't know, uh, endless possibilities, you know. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, well, that's just it. I mean, like I'm so very grateful for what they uh, the arc that they gave Herb this season. You know, um, from such a, a small little like uh, funny, very funny moment <laughs> uh, in season one, I, where they're like, "Wow, that that was really good." So let's make more of that. <laughs> and it's a, it's a beautiful balance to have within the show, too. And the show is like, it's, it's amazing. It's so well written. Um, and it has so much heart to it. But it's got a lot of comedy to it as well. And, and uh, Pogo was never written <laughs> in like a, as a comedic role. But Herb is like right up my alley, you know. <laughs> and I can relate to a lot of his, his nervousness, his neuroses. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to, to play so, you know, we mentioned uh, Second City, which is where mm -hmm. you currently teach improv. Uh, and you, you also teach acting, if I'm not mistaken, correct? You teach acting and improv? Yeah, I teach, uh, I teach a bunch of things. Uh, I, um, I teach, uh, started out teaching a lot of improv and then I uh, started teaching public speaking. I teach clown, like theatrical clowning, uh, you know, embrace your inner idiots, make an audience laugh, you know, look foolish. Oh, that's so good. Uh, and I'm teaching some comedic acting stuff right now at another improv theater called Bad Dog Theater, teaching a mindfulness class. I do a lot of meditation and mindfulness over the last five years. And so, uh, again, just over the pandemic, it was an opportunity to I, I got asked to teach this. And and it's, it's stuff that I love. And I love the variety of the things that I'm involved in. And and it's all under that thing. I know we had talked earlier uh, before we started this, this uh, like the idea of helping people, and I just feel like that's so important. Uh, for me, I, my background is actually in counseling. I, I don't know if many people know that, but I used to um, uh, do career counseling for 10 years. I uh, worked in non-for-profits and things like that. And and uh, for me, the joy of helping someone, whether it be counseling or making someone laugh or entertaining someone, I mean, that's huge. That really is very, very powerful. And that's a, that's a, a great gift um, for me. Uh, so, yeah. Do, do your students get starstruck when, when you're teaching them? Do they say, oh, my God, that's, that's her. That's <laughs> He's uh, maybe a little bit at first like it's funny i'm actually uh just last week i started teaching uh, uh an acting one class at second city so it's like the very beginner level of like a, a four or five level program and, uh, <laughs> and so i was like it, it must be pretty it's pretty cool to be like hey uh yeah i'm on a show right now you might you know you might recognize me and uh so uh there's a bit of that but i mean for me it's like you know, we, then we get into the work, you know, and then we just do it and then we have fun. And, um, and, and uh, you know, so much of this is like, we're all just people like, we're, you know, um, and, uh, I, you know, again, I'm in a very, uh, you know, I appreciate this position that I'm in, that I get to help people and get to teach people. And I'm certainly no expert on any of this stuff, really. It's just that I just teach the stuff that, that works for me and the, the, the stuff that gives me a lot of joy and a lot of pleasure uh, as well. And, you know, thank you so much for, for doing what you do, Ken. You know, I'm, you know the community, um, they, they appreciate it. You know, we, we appreciate you. Um, I got to ask you, you know, uh, you guys just made, you guys were the top spot on Nielsen's first streaming top 10 list with 3.01 billion minutes viewed. Uh, that is amazing. You also set the record for the longest consecutive days at number one for a scripted show. How rewarding has that been for you? <laughs> uh, I just read one of the questions here. Uh, what does what does Aiden smell like? <laughs> when he, when he pretzel? <laughs> uh, Aiden, are question. you still on? Can you answer that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, that'll be next week's uh, uh, one as well. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry, what was your question? Oh, <laughs> I you know, um, oh you yeah, guys, amazing. Like, uh, so yeah, like that. That's incredible. Like that is like jaw dropping. Of like, oh my gosh, like, uh, and it's lovely that I mean, this is the really cool thing to be on a Netflix show in particular because it's like it can be seen anywhere anywhere and everywhere and uh, again the show isn't like one particular genre it's not like just superheroes not just action it's not just drama it's like everything so i just feel it has such a wide appeal to it and and i'm so glad that people dig it 
And uh, it's a solid, you know, again, our fans, I think, are the best because it's, uh, you know, the art, just the, you know, just the support alone is like, that's amazing. And so uh, it's lovely to be part of that, you know, and just be at the party with everyone, you know, and uh, so I don't take any of that stuff for granted. It's just like, this is a beautiful moment. And for me, I'm just like, I'm enjoying this moment. And Canadians, we're generally, <laughs> I don't know if you've met many Canadians, but we're typically pretty modest and very polite. And th those are great traits, really, to have. But for me, I'm like, I I'm going to enjoy this. I'm really going to, you know, uh, savor this and, and, uh, and, and soak this up because this doesn't happen always, you know. And I'm like, wow, I'm on literally the best show <laughs> or like one of the most watched shows so it's like you know those moments you know when they come savor them you know really such is life right you know those, a lot of things are possibly out of our control so it's just you know this moment right now let's live in this moment let's enjoy this moment right now and that's what i'm doing i'm loving this this is like uh so many people reached out to me on instagram and like Fans from all over the world. I mean, there are right now. I, I want to hi from Iran. Like, Hello, Iran. <laughs> That's amazing. I saw Russia earlier and like France. This is amazing. Uh, and so for me, that, that idea of connection is so important. And uh, it's just, yeah, like it's the best to, to talk shop with the fans. Super cool. And to have that kind of thing, like that effect on people. Like um, are there, are people have been reaching out to me. Uh, there's some people that have been reaching out to me that are like, hey, I've never seen anyone look like you on TV. I'm four, seven and three quarters. I major scoliosis, which is like the curvature of the spine. And so it's lovely that, you know, people are kind of like, yeah, you look like me. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, wow. So I'm chatting with a lot of people from all over the world that uh, are different, you know, and or have felt very different and maybe felt that they never fit in in the world. And that's a big part of the show. Everyone feels that they don't fit in in that show, and that alienation and, you know, feeling alone, feeling that you don't belong. And, and so for me, this is, I've lived there. I mean, I, I know that growing up. So it's lovely that, yeah, I can talk to people all over the world. I mean, there's one person I'm talking to uh, in Wales and she's uh, awaiting spinal surgery. She also has scoliosis. And <laughs> so now we've actually been trading x-rays. <laughs> She's like, can I send you an x-ray? I'm like, absolutely. Let me send you mine as well. So, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty remarkable. That, that, that's, that's such, you know, you just moved me right now with, with, with that. I mean, mm. um, it's wonderful that, you know, kids are seeing you that might have the same um, challenges as you. And, you know, you, I love the diversity that Umbrella Academy has shown, and I love the diversity of the entire cast. You know, can, can you talk about working in a diverse setting, a diverse cast? How was that experience? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm also trying to write this in the chat, saying <laughs> I wish I could reply to everyone. Uh, they're coming in, it's like multitasking. Um, that's one of the main strengths of the show is the cast. And the diversity, as you said, and that follows the storylines of what's happening season two back in 1963 in Dallas. But it's like the things that we're experiencing, racism, homophobia, for, like all of those things is like, that's happening now. And uh, that's the, the, the strength of the show. It's like you've got all these different perspectives, all these different personalities, all these different backgrounds and such coming together. For me, that's real life. And uh, I, I, this kind of goes back to my sense of performing and the idea of helping other people is that I, I look at entertaining as, as that, as like making people laugh wonderful. But I also see like, you know, TV and shows and movies and such are also educational. I grew up watching tons of TV and film and such. And that's how I kind of learned about the world around me. And shows they think of like Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street, for example, they did an excellent job of showing differences. And for me, I think that that's just so important. If you grow up and you see a show where you're like, wow, I've never seen that person before, but you humanize that person and it's not weird or scary or different, then that's just the, that's the world. That's the real world. And uh, for me, I just, again, like the, the, I know how much TV and film has, helped me grow you know and i look you know i look to people i grew up watching like robin williams for example i'm like wow you know it's so good to have people that you can like 
aspire to, you know, and be like, wow, if they can do it, maybe I can do it kind of thing, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, I think that that's one of the absolute main strengths within the show, that it's that diversity, and I want to see that everywhere, you know, and to have more of that. Uh, they, the stories are going to be so much better <laughs> as well, right? <laughs> and, and, and thank you for that. You know, uh, I'm sure there's kids out there right now that are either watching this live or watch season one and two and are definitely, you know, inspired by you and they want to get into the field as well. And, and you know, to see you on screen, they're probably saying, hey, man, um, I can do this. I, I want that's my hero. I, I want to be just like Ken. That, that, that's what I want to be when I grow up. That gives you that amazing feeling of, you know, that you, you know, you, you're not just here um, to be on screen, but also to inspire others. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, it's funny, growing up, I just wanted to be normal. <laughs> I just wanted to fit in. I didn't want to be different. And But now it's like over the years, especially, that was the big thing for improv, is like, oh, wow, this is actually pretty good, <laughs> you know, and to own that. And, and rather than resistant, of like, and rather than stressing out about like, oh, I want to change this thing about that I don't like about me, it's you for a reason. So, uh, you know, instead of sweating it and trying to be different, trying to change the person that you actually are, be, be who you are, own the very things, you know, and uh, that's, I, I just think that like, it's, you know, the easy, easiest way you find happiness, man, when you show up legitimately you, authentically you, that's kind of like, wow, like, you, there, there's a presence within that, there's kind of like, I like that, and you, uh, that's an invitation for other people to follow suit as well, and so I, uh, as I as I get older, I'm like it's it's much more about like this connection. Just be real, talk. You know, you know, n no, um, yeah. I'm just, you minimize the ego, right? You know, and in 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 plain service, and that's something me my my comedy partner Isaac. We I play in a duo called Two Men No Show, which is this clown improv <laughs> hybrid thing that we do. And our thing is about let's let's just play with our audience. Let's celebrate, you know. And that's a way of helping other people. And uh, for me, I think that that's just like, that's the best, you know? That's, uh, put a smile on someone's face is uh, healing people. And we need a lot of healing. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff <laughs> that we need to, uh, that we're working through. Laughter is the best medicine. There is no doubt about that. <laughs> um, and you do it, you know, you do it better than, than, any, than anyone out there. Or, you know, you're at the top up there, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, let's change gears a little bit. And, sure. thank, and thank you for that. Uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about your experience uh, at Comic-Con. You know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I would definitely love to. Uh, I also want to get to some of these questions oh, as yeah, well. Definitely. Uh, but I, I love to talk about Comic-Con. Comic-Con was one of the best weekends I've ever had in my life. I was down there a few years ago for another show that I was on called uh, People of Earth. Uh, oh, Ireland. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's the greatest. It's the whole city just comes out. It's a giant party. And um, uh, it, it was so surreal. I don't know how many people how many people were there that weekend, but it was it was really really wonderful. I got to meet a ton of fans, do some autograph sessions. Uh, we did a preview of the first uh, first two episodes, I believe, of season two of People of Earth. Um, they had this thing, <laughs> an alien abduction experience. So we, we had actually filmed uh, like <laughs> this sort of virtual rally. So there's these sort of like dentist chairs that you go and you sit in and then you put the VR goggles on and then you're like beamed up to the ship. And so I'm there and two other aliens are there and we're kind of like doing experiments but we're like bickering <laughs> among each other and it's like they would blow air and like water and stuff so it was a real yeah it was just a real treat um yeah <laughs> i can't say enough of it i, I want to do more of those things i want to again have this opportunity to meet with meet with folks and and uh and chat but the energy was just so cool it was like a giant party uh, where a lot of the people are dressed up <laughs> and like you could have like the best costume but you could just be in any costume and and it's that thing you're accepted you know there's no there's no you know hierarchy or anything like that we're all fans you know and we're just hanging out and, and just enjoying each other's company and there's that particular kind of energy of uh, 
opposite of that. And I, I'm not usually good in crowds. Like, I usually don't like that. It, it feels very stressful. But this was a different experience. This was, like, again, just wonderful. It's, it's such an awesome experience, right? I mean, you're amongst geeks and nerds and fans and, and it feels like you're like, for me, it feels like I'm at home, you know, this, that's my crowd. Um, but, um, I got to ask you about, you know, Jeff DeGray, did, did anybody dress up? I'm just curious. Did you see any cosplay? No, I haven't seen, uh, no, I haven't, this, uh, at that point it was only season one that came up. I didn't see any, uh, anyone dressed up as Jeff, which was, <laughs> I really want to. There was someone who actually, someone from TBS, she was like, I want to show you something. And they took out their phone and they showed me a photo. So someone had actually gotten tattooed Jeff and uh, with a reindeer and a scroll underneath that says, don't get weird, which is kind of like a tagline for the show. Uh, but no, I haven't seen anyone dress up. I'm so curious if anyone's going to dress as Herb. <laughs> you know, I, I, that would be amazing. I would. <laughs> I, would I so think you are going to see a bunch of commission folks, especially Herb. You're going <laughs> right. to see, a bunch of folks, you know, what the suitcase is at Comic-Con next year. Hopefully, if there's a, you know, hopefully there's a vaccine and, you know, we have Comic-Con, but uh, I'm sure you will. Uh, Ken, you have a question down below from Ireland. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Uh, oh, awesome. Hello, Ireland. Uh, Ella, uh, thank you for your awesome question. So the question is, uh, oh, man, start of the show. Wow, that's very kind of you. My favorite scene to film um, <laughs> one of my favorite moments, I mean, there's so many, to be honest, there's so many, but uh, one that really d stands out to me is in season two, <laughs> it's more of a smaller bit, uh, but I, I just had so much fun, there's Herb on his tricycle, and he's going through, he's trying to find the, that number that uh, AJ in the fishbowl uh, at the bottom, so he's going to, in this this massive thing of like all these filing cabinets, so we shot this in the sound stage here in Toronto, and uh, so the filing cabinets are there, and I'm on this squeaky bike, <laughs> just going down. And uh, I, again, it's like there's, there's a lot of clown stuff within that. So I come up, you know, I get off the bike, and I'm like, I'm at the place. I'm looking for like the the for the number. So like casually, like whistling, looking around, <laughs> grabbing the file, and then like stuffing it into my pants. Uh, so again, there's just a lot of clown stuff within that. But I remember that day in particular, uh, <laughs> I, I was making the, uh, the crew laugh because I was just doing a lot of clownish things. And it, it, it's fairly, uh, like, uh, conservative of like what you see, the final cut, but there was a lot, a lot of things that I was playing around. So, uh, that one really stood out to me is that one was just super fun. And, and like, cause I've never ridden on a, on a tricycle <laughs> since I was a kid. Um, that was sorry, a huge file, like, too. Sorry to interrupt, but that was a huge file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's so many. I love like playing off, like season two in particular, like, oh man, playing off David. Jago was so much fun when he pulled a knife. Cause that's like, that's intense. Like he's, you know, he, they do all their stunts, right? And, like they're, uh, they're so good. <laughs> so when I come up behind him and he's like, turns around, he's got like the knife to my throat. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, playing with Ritu as well, uh, where she roughs me up in the stairwell. That was really fun. And again, like any time playing with Kate, uh, you know, just that, that, <laughs> that dynamic of, you know, the cat and mouse, the high status, the low status. And if Aiden is still here, Love playing with Aiden too. That guy is just such a powerhouse. So good, so good. And he's carrying so much of that show. Like he's just like, that's a big responsibility. And he just knocks it out of the park. Like he's just, he's so well cast uh, in that. He's such a, such a great actor, such a great guy too. Um, so as I said, there's not like one, I don't have one favorite scene, but there's, there's just so many, but uh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Can we have oh my God, a, a, someone wrote a comment, oh, Olivia. Yeah. Oh my God, Olivia Grace Hall. Last night I had a dream that my last name was Hall too, and I dreamt you were my dad. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. <laughs> man, <laughs> me as a dad. Oh. The world loves I would you, man. Like, would be a good dad. The world <laughs> loves you, Ken. They love you. Your fans love you. <laughs> Thank um, you. Man. Uh, I, I, there's another fan question that I, that I have yeah. over here. It's, uh, they say, they start off the question by Diego Stan here. What makes him a legend in Herb's eyes? What makes Diego a legend in Herb's eyes? 
Well, I mean, gosh, like his backstory, you know, and and because they've been at it since kids, they're like child stars, <laughs> in that sense, like fighting crime and, um, yeah, like that, you know, all of the Hargreaves, I think, are 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 those legendary s characters, and I love that Herb gets a bit starstruck when he sees them. You know, when he like <laughs> they come in with the <laughs> with the uh with Emmy and Robert there and uh the whole like straight flush kind of thing. Um but yeah, he's a fan, like cause, again they know the work that uh that the umbrella people do and <laughs> and so yeah, it was just uh, he's a fan. You know, they're they're good at what they do. And uh so her, yeah, Herb is starstruck. <laughs> uh do you think uh, that Harlan will trigger the next apocalypse. You don't have to answer this because I know you signed an NDA, Ken. <laughs> well, I don't know, too. I mean, I, 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 I don't know any storylines or anything like that. Uh, but it's, anything's possible, right? Anything is possible. Uh, <laughs> in comedy, there's the rule of threes. So <laughs> maybe we have three, <laughs> three apocalypses. Who knows? You never know, guys. Uh, has Herb's body remo removal service uh, business, bo uh, has it boomed uh, since the season finale? <laughs> yeah, we've had to outsource. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, we're trying to, uh, <laughs> trying to do a partnership with Amazon. Uh, <laughs> there's <laughs> body service prime. So that's uh, in uh, 48 hours. Uh, <laughs> we'll, <deliver. laughs> we'll make those deliveries. <laughs> that's great. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Herb, uh, body removal services. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, another fan wants to know how long did you, did it take to learn the handshake between you and, uh, oh, between and Diego? <laughs> um, that was interesting because that was, uh, gosh, that was really, that was tough. Uh, <laughs> like, it looks amazing, but it was my last, that was my last day of shooting as well. Uh, and I, so you're kind of emotional going in to it. And I, I, I'm just not sometimes good with like, <laughs> uh, with my hand. So it took a while to jam with that, but that's really all David. That was David just being like, Hey, do you want to do it like this? Do, 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 do. I'm like, great. So then me, I'm just trying to, it was that thing of like trying to grab <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> like doing the flip like that. I think that's where I had, <laughs> had the most problem, uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, but that was awesome. That was so much fun. I'm so happy how it turned out. It looks amazing. Uh, one of my favorite things too was like, and it's so in keeping of Herb. It's a small little detail, but I'm so proud of it. Of like when I do that in mind, like you know, taking the drag <laughs> when I put it down on the ground, and then my foot <laughs> like just like rubs it out like that, you know, like stamps on it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was such a. I mean, all your scenes were very memorable. Uh, you know, you are. In my opinion, you were the man, and, and thank you so much thank you, thank you. for everything that you have done with, you know, the community, with um, the folks that are, you know, going through tough times right now. Um, um, I truly, truly, truly appreciate you taking the time to be on my speedcast, and, and thank you for taking my questions and the fans' questions. Um, is there anything you want to say to the fans before we um, before we adjourn? Yeah, I want, to, I want to try and answer some of these. I want to try and actually go through some of these uh, as well, because it's it's like the multitasking of like trying to uh, type with these. So uh, yeah, if I can try and get some, oh man, there, <laughs> there's so much here. Good lord. Um, so I'll just say, I mean, like I, you know, I, I bottom on my heart, I, I'm just so honestly so grateful and so touched that you know that, that you know that the character of her really resonates with people, and I made people laugh and smile, and man, that that's you know at the end of the day, uh, that is that is so. Uh, that's so important and so meaningful for me. So I'm like, if I didn't get your, I'll say this too, if I didn't get your question here, if you want to Instagram, like just message me um, and, and I will be more than happy to, I try and, I try and respond to everyone who writes me and, oh, Peru, hey, Peru. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. Uh, so yeah, keep the questions coming to me uh, as well. If, if I don't get you in Mexico, hello, Mexico. This is lovely. Um so uh yeah it just like it just means so much to me and uh this this is my work of like i get to play pretend 
and 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 I get to play. I get to play. At the end of the day, I really get to play, and that just means a lot. When I was growing up, I I felt like I didn't really get to play a lot necessarily. So it's like as an adult, I'm so grateful that not only I'm in the position to play for myself, but I get to teach other people how to play, and then I get to be on on a show where I get to embody that as well. Uh, so again, for the fans, thank you so much for for watching. Uh, umbrella and thank you so much for all the herb love and it's it's really been it's been very moving for me and i get to chat from people you know all over the world and uh you know that is just such a special wonderful thing so uh just reach out to me on instagram if, if i didn't get to your question please just write me florida hey <laughs> uh and, and i'd be so happy to to keep chatting with folks uh i'm literally teaching a class <laughs> in 15 minutes that's why i gotta kind of wrap up um in in just a bit but again thanks so much for having me Julian. thanks so much for everyone for, for tuning in right now and for tuning into the show and i hope that we can meet one day um at, you know, at a con or something that'd be awesome and uh again love talking shop hey brazil uh yeah this is just the the greatest and um thank you Thank you, Ken. Uh, were you, would you be willing to come back after season three and we could do another session? Yeah. <laughs> I'll come back next week if you want. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like this. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We, yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you for being on. Uh, you, you, you are the legend. You are a legend. <laughs> I truly appreciate you. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining today on my speedcast. Everyone, be safe. Please wear a mask. And 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 once again, Ken, you are a legend. Thank you so much, and and congratulations on your success. You have a very Thanks. enjoyable rest of your day. You too. Bye, everyone. Love you all. Love you all. <laughs> Take care. Take care, everyone. <laughs>